Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, January 6th City Council meeting. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Alderman Santee? Here. Alderman Glad? Here. Alderman Schaefer? Here. Alderman Mahivik? Here. Alderman Devine? Here. Uh, if you could please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> At this time, we're going to be uh, swearing into office Alderman uh, Ward uh, for for Ryan Hardy. Uh, Dave McCarter will go ahead and swear you in. Ryan, step up. Usually front and center. Hey, I'm the city attorney. I am Mr. C. More importantly, I'm a notary. <laughs> <laughs> Five bucks on the door. Would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Ryan Hardy. I, Ryan Hardy. Having been duly appointed, I've been duly appointed to the office of Alderman Ward for. Office of Alderman Ward for to solemnly swear, to solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I'll support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the ordinances of the State of Illinois, and the ordinances of the State of Illinois, and I will faithfully discharge, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of Alderman, the duties of Alderman Ward for, Ward for, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Turn it back now. Routine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anyone for public comment at this time? Sir, is your name Tony? How do you pronounce your last name? Muser. Can you please step up to the podium? And that's you, M U S U R? Correct. Okay. My address, if you could just state your address for public record 908 Hanson. Uh, McHenry or Patriot States. I live in Patriot States. We all downsized. It's over 55 and older, but I would say 90% is over 70. We are probably 95% full capacity now. There's only like 12 lots left. Our biggest concern now is safety. We've had several incidents. Um, that first snowfall, somebody had footsteps come onto her back door. She's alone. We have a lot of single female ladies there. Another incident where a gentleman came home and put the car in the garage and got out and somebody walked up to him and said, can I talk to you? And he says, no. And the gentleman says, Fred, um, you want to finish that? Sure. Just his house, what he asked the gentleman. Fred, if you could just state your full name and address for public. Sure. Uh, Fred Raddick, 1028 Monroe, uh, McHenry, Illinois, Patriot Estates. On um, the evening of December 25th, between five, I'd say 510 and 520, I was putting the car in the garage. And I didn't have my outside lights on because I didn't think I was going to be home that late. And I heard voices. Somebody was saying, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? I didn't see anybody, so I stepped out onto my driveway. Somebody had approached me and wanted to talk to me. So I said, uh, you're on my driveway, you have to leave. And then he mumbled something. I don't under didn't understand him. And I told him again, you have to leave, you're on my driveway. And then he mumbled some more stuff. And I said, you gotta leave. So he left, he went to the intersection of Jefferson and Monroe, which is like kitty corner from me, stood out in the intersection and was checking out the whole corner area there. So then I thought it was suspicious, so I called 911. <coughs> and they said he was soliciting, that he had a permit to solicit in that community. And he was from a, um, Oh, I forgot what you call it. Anyway, uh, but he wasn't going door to door. He was just walking down the street on the sidewalk, stopping in, every, in the front of every house and walking at the houses. Then he, he walked far enough north where I lost him in the shadows, you know. And it was, uh, say, five, between 510 and 520. And I was on the line with 911. And I don't know if the call dropped off or what. And 
you know, she already had given me an answer that he had a permit for soliciting. So that's, that's one thing. We had a gentleman walking his dog around 7.30 at night, and a guy came up to him and says, can I borrow your phone? I'd like to call my dad, pick me up. We have roughly 125 homes there. We have eight street lights, eight, one in each corner. Now, whoever okayed the zoning for that, for the developer ought to be shot. I was president of the zoning board for, for two years. Safety was first, traffic was second, codes were third. We followed that. I was on the police commission for Lakemore for five years. We demanded that every officer go down every road once a shift. Get to know the people, get to talk to them. Now this is what we're talking about as far as safety. We have no safety there, we're 70 and over. I've been there for two and a half years. I haven't seen a car, I see a car three times in two and a half years come down my street, and that's it. Now we gotta do something about this. We're not young people anymore, we're older. We act slower, but we need your help is what we need. So, Chief, if you can get some police protection out there. I'd be more than happy to talk to you after the council meeting. For okay. I live at 908 Hanson, you want to come out? Like I said, I was police chief for, for five years for Lakemore, and we did a lot more than I think that McHenry's doing right now for our citizens, to be honest with you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else uh, that would like to make a public comment? See none, moving on to consent agenda items 6A through 6G. Um, is any council members wanting to pull an item for separate consideration? All of them? A, B, and E for discussions, please. A, B, and E is an error? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> any others? All right. I am looking for a uh, motion for items 6, C, D, F, and G for approval. All of Santi? I'll make that motion. Second? All of Harding? Uh, any discussion on these items? Just oh, real quick, the, on the 6C with the dredging, mm -hmm. uh, is that now completed already with the extra work that has to be done? Yes, they just completed it this weekend, wrapped up. So, okay. So you'll see, uh, you'll see the, I think the long reach excavator is the only thing that's left. They took the barge out and that uh, should go this week. <coughs> and I am asking for, uh, $15,000 was the overall estimate. I'm asking for actual load tickets, just as we did for the rest of the project, to have an exact number of what that extra material is. All right, thank you. I'm a chair. On that same one, uh, Bill, so do we know, it may not be 15. It may not be 15. It may be less, okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? See none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Santi? Yes. Alderman Harding? Yes. Alderman Glatt? Yeah. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Mahavik? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Thank you, Council. Next item on the agenda was pulled by Alderman Glatt for A. 6A is uh, City of McHenry complete streets policy and ordinance to support transportation access, quality of uh, live and economic development for the City of McHenry and its residents. Alderman Glatt? Yeah. We're talking quality of life and economic development for the city of McKenna and its residents. And when you read this policy, I don't see a stress at all in residential streets. And my feeling is, is the way that policy is written and, and read that it just seems like there's so many things that we'd, we'd like to do, but we're not really addressing the basic problem, which has been... Uh, the streets in the city of McHenry. Um, every time that we do some of these projects that we get uh, grant money for, granted it's nice that they pay 80%, but we're paying 20% and that's taken away from the street programs. And it bothers me the fact that, again, I don't see anything in there that, that really talks about the street programs. Uh, within our neighborhoods and, and it's really getting to be a bigger and bigger concern all the time. 
So I just wanted to bring that up. Any other comments, questions by council? Look up for a motion for approval for 6A as presented. Alderman Schaefer? I'll make that motion. Second, Alderman Santi? I'll second it. Discussion? <coughs> Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Santi? Yes. Alderman Glad? No. Alderman Harvey? Yes. Alderman Mahivik? <coughs> yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Thank you, Council. Next item on the agenda is 6B, it was pulled by Alderman Glad. Oakwood Drive Bridge Replacement pre pre Preliminary <laughs> Engineering Services Agreement for Federal Participation with Bre Baxter and Woodman Incorporated, the amount not to exceed $119,465. Um, the local agency agreement for the federal participation in this, uh, and a City of McHenry resolution appropriating funds for the Oakwood Drive Bridge replacement and a budget amendment ordinance for Phase 1 engineering services for the Oakwood Drive Bridge replacement project, which will amend the overall contract cost from $75,000 to $119,465 and the local share from $15,000 to $23,893. Yeah, I have for years been talking about uh, Boom Creek and the fact that we don't have a, a real good handle on what's going on with Boom Creek. Um, and again, the discussions uh, kept coming up every time we talked about uh, uh, digging out Boom Lagoon. Again, stuff's coming from Boom Creek. Boom Creek's filling up. Um, you can see uh, just where Oakwood Bend's uh, if you saw that that area 20 years ago and what it looks like now, I mean, uh, it's just couldn't tell if it was the same open area that it was at that time. And my concerns are is, is we haven't seen development south of Boone Creek yet. When the Jerstad development comes in, uh, you cross uh, Bull Valley and then you have the Scotty property there that sooner or later will come into the city and get developed. Maybe it won't be for 20 more years, but the thing is, is are we gonna be ready for any of these developments? Because uh, I can remember with a 100 year storm watching the water running uh, across Dartmoor on both sides of the bridge. Uh, and granted, we don't have a 100 year storm every year, but uh, I've seen it where we've had more than one in, in one year uh, in the last 20. And they do, Frequent. In fact, we've had our hundred year storm on the south end, I believe uh, of our discussions were about two months ago. So I guess my, my concern more than anything else is, is we're doing projects like this, the capacity that will, will be moved through these, uh, through underneath Oakwood is not gonna change, correct? basically going to be a replacement of what we have. It, it's possible the conveyance could increase a, a bit. Um, anytime you replace a bridge, uh, you have to meet uh, you have modern requirements in terms of the magnitude of storm that has to be able to pass. Um, but we also have to, as a part of that design process, um, model and prove that there is basically no negative effect upstream and downstream uh, of the properties upstream and downstream of the structure that we build. So we, we have to prove that we, we aren't going to inadvertently uh, cause damage to someone's property, either down or up from our improvement. And I understand that, and I, I agree 100% with that, but the only thing I'm getting at is, is are we going to spend this money to fix this bridge at this point in time? And sooner or later, we're gonna have to bite the bullet. We're gonna have to look at a long-term plan for Boone Creek. I know it's a very, very costly project, uh, and, and it may take 20 years for, for that project to get done, but it's gonna be in phases, if we ever get started doing it. And the thing is, is, is are we gonna spend you know, all this money and then have to tear this up down the road because it doesn't fit the way it's engineered right now with the total plans for the entire, um, Call it rehabilitation of uh, Boom Creek. I, I don't. I don't believe so because any future development has to contain itself. You know, with with our detention requirements, and any development that happens, particularly upstream, would have to um, 
again, it would have to contain itself and be released at a very sl slow rate of release. Um, and I, I don't believe that would affect the design of this this structure either now or in the future. These these uh, developments have to stand on their own two feet in terms of their effects. You know, I, I've argued with engineers before. I know what I see when I go out there. Um, over the last 15, 60 years, I haven't been out there that much, but 20 years ago, I happened to be off twice when we had 100 year storms. I, I've seen where the water comes and where it flows. And like I've told staff many years ago, if I'm sitting on the back of my deck and telling you where the water flows in the high school fields, no engineer is going to tell me I'm not seeing what I see. And when I was out there with those 100 year storms, no engineer is going to tell me I didn't see what I saw. And I'm telling you that we're going to wind up with development just like Ann Street right now, where we're getting more and more uh, because of the development of Patriot Estates and because of Crestwood Trails that yes, they go with our city ordinances as far as what they have to build for detention. However, that detention is, is for what, 20 year storm? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't address a 100 year storm and, and that winds up really impacting our systems. And the thing is, is we need to be ready for that development so that if nothing else, maybe we need to make some of these developers pay for some of that improvements before the, the taxpayers wind up getting hit for it at the end. And, and again, that's what, all I'm saying is, is we need to start doing studies, long-term studies, and know where we're heading 10, 15, and 20, and 30 years out. And granted, uh, I don't want to call it piecemeal, but phases that we do, we want to make sure that that all fits in line with everything that, else that needs to be done. And I'm not just talking Boone Creek, but, but other, other areas as well. Um, you know, how are we going to fix Ann Street? Uh, probably uh, we're going to look at regional detention possibly. If we do, who's going to pay for that? It's not going to be the developers because they're already built it. They've already built it. And it's, it's going to impact us if we, there's something that we're going to have to do. I mean, I believe with travesties of uh, seeing drainage uh, since I was a kid, I can remember when we used to come out here to West Shore Beach back in the, the late 50s, early 60s and watch the, uh, the sewer uh, covers come floating up and uh, getting pushed up in the displays because of the uh, water pressures that were coming out of the sewers. We don't want to wind up with those type of problems and we're going to need the plan properly out there over a period of time, but we need to get these studies done. And I guess that's my, my major concern is the fact that I think we need to, to do something to make sure that uh, down the road we're not just doing these as piecemeal because this is kind of what, what this is. It's, it's something that does need to be done. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it doesn't need to be done. But it bothers me that we don't know how that, that specific bridge is going to be a, um, in the, the wake of, of the entire reconditioning of the tree. And until we know that, um, I feel that we're spending the dollars now because we have to, but how much of that could be saved down the road if it was done and, and engineered the way it needs to be for the future? And I guess that's the point I'm driving on. Any other questions, comments by council? See, now I'm looking for a motion for item 6B as presented. Hold on, Bob. I'll make that motion. Second. Alderman Mahanek, second. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Glad? Yes. Alderman Mahanek? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Harding? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Sampi? Yes. Thank you, Council. The next item that was pulled by Alderman Glad is 6E, Professional Services Contract for the Barrowville Road Wing Wall Replacement Project to, uh, to Hampton, Lanzini, and Renwick Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $60,610. All of you left? Yeah. We became responsible for this right away uh, when we did the annexation for, what is that, uh, 
that subdivision Shamrock uh, part over it. Okay, so whatever it goes through. Anyway, um, however, the water that flows through there comes a lot, starts actually uh, from fields that, that are in Prairie Grove, comes through the conservation department <coughs> or the conservation areas and then underneath the road and then goes out to the county and then back into the conservation areas again until it reaches the river. Yet the city of McHenry is paying the $60,000 to fix it. And is there any way that we could ask the conservation department to pay for part of that or, or possibly part of uh, Prairie Grove? Because a lot of that is going to be uh, impacted by Prairie Grove <coughs> when they start developing south of uh, that subdivision. That's all going to come in from there. And have we looked at uh, revenues from possibly uh, the conservation department, considering they're the ones uh, where this uh, this water flows through, and it actually starts, like I say, uh, you know, further southeast, or I'm sorry, southwest uh, from Barrington. And it just concerns me that we're, we're picking up the tab to fix it when there are other entities uh, that are the ones that are impacting it. And other than the fact that we got stuck with that part of the roadway because we had to annex the entire property and then that was donated to the conservation district many years ago, um, it really doesn't help or hinder the city of McHenry in any way, shape, or form. But again, like I say, I, I understand that, you know, it is part of our right of way, but to me, I just feel that there are other taxing entities that possibly should be helping pay for that project. And maybe, maybe it's food for thought uh, when we look at annexations down the road, uh, things like this, because this was missed, I'm sure. It's not something that just deteriorated just recently. It's the way it was constructed and everything in the first place. And it's not something that we looked at as far as what we took over responsibility for it when we did the annexation years back. Otherwise, I'm sure we would have had the developer pay for it, you know. And I know we <coughs> were there when, when that happened. But I'm just saying, you know, for the future, we, we, maybe we think about that, that we, all the infrastructure is looked at uh, that exists so that, that we don't wind up having to do these things later. Any other comments, questions? Alderman Santing? Yeah, real quick, because of this, where this is located, and uh, um, we have no other options. It's it. This is. Uh, I understand where Alderman Glass coming from. You know, regards to conservation department, but or district, but it, it it's on us. I mean, there's no, there's no grant money or anything that we can look at, or any any other government agencies, any levels to request. Correct. We we did do a bit of research to see if there were any sort of IDOT programs that, that were available. Um, the issue is while it, while it is a, a box culvert that is a, a relatively complex, more complex structure than just a regular simple cul culvert crossing, um, it, it's not 20 foot in span, so it's, it doesn't cla it's not classified as a bridge, so it's it's not thereby eligible for federal aid because it's not a bridge. And um, a, a lot of the SCP projects that we do, even other agencies, uh, when they have to do rehabilitative work <coughs> through a large box culvert structure. Even bridges, a lot of times, those costs are 100% local. Uh, for example, the, the Lincoln Road, uh, the Pro Lincoln Project, the Pearl Street Bridge, the deck patching, and the, um, the bearing repairs that were done on that project, those were done 100% local. So um, these, these sorts of structures, um, if it's not a bridge replacement, typically it's, it's, it's on the local agency, 100%. Okay, thank you. Tom, yeah, just. We talked about uh, the Oakwood uh, drainage and how it's engineered uh, to make sure that it doesn't impact uh, any any properties uh, up or downstream from there. I'm sure we're doing the same thing with this um, because when it leaves the conservation area and it goes underneath that road, which is our responsibility, it then flows on the private property before it goes to conservation. I just want to make sure that we don't wind up picking up any liability. Uh, you know how 
we've had problems before where somebody says, well, we did this or we did that, uh, um, and it impacted flooding for somebody. And when it, in essence, it wasn't. It's just so that we're make sure that our, all our eyes are dotted and our teeth are crossed on this so that uh, nothing comes back to bite us later. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, this, this scope is a little more extensive than, than we would have hoped for uh, for permitting com compliance issues because we're working in a waterway. Um, but we, we are not adjusting capacity. That we're keeping the same barrel section. The barrel is still in good shape. It's just a matter of um, the, the wing walls are, are about to fall over. Uh, one already has. And uh, the purpose is to uh, restore the wing walls to a serviceable condition, keep the same barrel and the same conveyance capacity, um, and, and get the full service life out of the structure that we think we can get. Are there any uh, restrictions now because of that? caving in or is it pretty much flowing as it was designed originally? No, no restrictions. The, uh, the old wing wall actually fell across the, the stream. Uh, we brought in a contractor to pull that out because it was sitting there for some time. Uh, so no limitations. Um, and we, do, we did have to put in a temporary sheet power repair to reduce the risk of any sort of washouts. Um, but it's, it's not a permanent repair. The permanent okay. repair is what we want to work on. The flows will be the same and that way at least it's on record that the flows will be the same when we get done with the project. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Auto Chair. On, on this particular waterway, is that um, considered anybody's, any jurisdiction, the actual waterway? It, 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 is, um, it is Army Corps jurisdictional. So we've got scoped into our um, scope of services, um, Army Corps permitting um, for that. Anytime you're working in and around the waters of the U.S., um, permitting um, and, and uh, the amount of protection of the waters you have to do is, is pretty uh, pretty intense, and we're making sure we're complying with that requirement. Is there any um, uh, support from them from a funding standpoint? No. No? Um, nothing. Any other questions, comments? <coughs> For a motion on 60 as presented. Alderman Santi? I'll make that motion as is presented. Uh, second. Alderman Mahoney? Second. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Santi? Yes. Alderman Mahoney? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Harding? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Glad? Yes. Thank you, Council. Next item is uh, 7A, uh, action item. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to David McArdle at this time. So we tried to give you um, information that everyone was looking for regarding indemnification. <coughs> I was requested by one of the aldermen, I don't remember who it was, that to bring back a, uh, an ordinance that we could pull from somewhere else. I, I looked at four or five of them. I selected Lake Forest, I gave you their version. I really didn't touch that very much. I added a sentence at the end. But I wanted to see you, I wanted to show you that village's action the way it was written without trying to customize it to my liking since I'm the one writing it. So um, I heard back from Alderman Mahavik who's got some comments to try and restrict the intent of Lake Forest maybe a little bit more narrowly, a little closer to what the statute provides by way of tort immunity. And so I'll let him give you his comments and then we'll see where we go with this. Thank you. I mean, I want to say first of all, I'm in favor of having an ordinance on the books providing for indemnification of governmental or employees. Uh, there's no question, but I think it should be on the lines of the Governmental Tort Immunity Act, uh, Section 302, which we have in our packet. Um, the ordinance we were given from Lake Forest goes well beyond that and I think it's got some problems with the way it's written in addition to that. So it's, I think it's overbroad and I think it's got issues with the way it's written. I would like to see how other ordinances from other municipalities have done it to see what we want to do and craft our own. Um, I don't want to use the one from Lake Forest. Um, I think we should work on creating our own. And I think it should be pretty much along the lines of exactly what Section 302 <coughs> of the Tort Immunity Act here provides for. <coughs> One thing I did know after we spoke is I, I went back to the definition. The Tort Immunity Act 
talks about injury, and injury talks about civil actions, and the Lake Forest one went into administrative and criminal allegations, so we might want to <coughs> broaden it in that respect, but it did, obviously every town adopts this at a time when it's relevant. I don't think they just pop it into their codes. They Something happens and they incorporate it, so they might be written around whatever was going on in Lake Forest at the time. It doesn't really apply to us. So if we stick close to the statute, it's probably a good idea. Um, but yeah, I would say we would, again, table this. And <coughs> I would ask if uh, all of you have considering your background, uh, work with uh, David McCardle to form what you would feel that the rest of the council would feel comfortable with an ordinance uh, specific. And I'll make a motion to that. Oh, is there any other discussions before we vote? Yeah. All in favor? I, I, I understand what's been discussed here and, and to write it more where it's appropriate for the city of McHenry. Um, the one item when I looked at this, I, and I, I, I thank the Mayor Jeff for spending some time with me a few days ago discussing this item prior to coming to us tonight. Uh, I was looking at this as potentially breaking it up into two motions anyways where we would um, work on this ordinance and, and pass, fail, what have you at that time. But also there is, um, there is a sum of money out there that um, uh, the, the, the mayor's attorney is requesting. I don't want to If we were to vote, is that is it a possibility of voting on that tonight? Because to whether we do or not, but to take care of this portion of the of this item, you can. I, th um, I think under the Tort Immunity Act, the way it's written, you have the discretion to do that. And 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 the reason because we're going to do this ordinance, and it's almost like it's to me, it's it's saying we're putting something in place to take care of something that happened in the past and uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel right to me and I, I would look at this situation as it's one item yes what the attorney said is that we don't normally go into something like this until it occurs or uh, potential has potential to to occur uh, so I I'm open to that. I'm open to that discussion of at least making a motion for a payment or not to pay. But I want to be able to <coughs> to look at that option tonight because if we, if you understand, if we do this ordinance, it's it's after the fact of what's already occurred. If you follow that thinking, and I'll leave it at that. If anybody else has thoughts on that. Alderman Schaefer. I, um, separate of that, um, for the what's in the, the 302 versus what's in Lake Forest, it, it talks about employees versus like council or aldermen. Would that be included in the how it's determined for the other one? Is that what you were thinking too? It was. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Plus, I think under the act, it would make employees are. Yeah, it's an odd term because when you read it, it doesn't seem to apply. But then when you look at the definitions of employee, it includes elected, elected officials. Yeah. I, saw that in that whole I think it's important to include the appointed commissioners too. I'm going to be able to how that applies because police commissions, or at least they, back in the day when they were in charge of, you know, discipline, that was an issue. Right. So. Okay, that's all I had. Anyone else? Understand, but if there's a, you know, if there's a thought out there in regards to what I brought up, I, I mean, I'd like to hear 
comments if, if, if you're comfortable. You want to separate the items? Yes. So, so, so I'll make the motion then to table the ordinance until a further uh, further work is done until till, yeah. till the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and leave it at that's office. That's it. Second. I'll second. I'll move tonight. Yes. Discussion. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Santee? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Mahavik? Yes. Alderman Harding? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Glenn? Yes. Okay. Is there another motion? Alderman Santee? I would like to make a motion that we uh, we <coughs> reimburse uh, Mayor Jett on his legal fees in regards to defending him on the ethics complaints filed against him uh, in the sum of $2,745.10. Pursuant to the Tort Immunity Act. Pursuant to the Tort Immunity Act. Second. Alderman Schaefer. I'll second. Thank you. Discussion? Alderman Havick? Can't support the motion uh, for three reasons. One, it's retroactive. Two, there's no uh, statute on the books, sorry, ordinance on the books to support it. And three, I don't think the uh, Tort Immunity Act is clear, you know, clearly covers the situation. Any other discussion? I'm going to say anything. I, um, okay. If it doesn't pass tonight, do we have the option of bringing it back? You would then, if you brought it back, the better way to bring it back would be to adopt it under the ordinance if that ever gets adopted. So I'd have to change my motion. Or I'd have to, motion or, or just let the problem. most. Right. Okay. All right, I, I, I understand that. Okay, I understand. All in shape. Attorney McCardo, do we have any, uh, with your knowledge of just in the city of McHenry where we've had legal fees for elected officials that have happened in the last 20 years? It's a memory thing. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think this has ever happened, otherwise we would have adopted this. I don't understand why this isn't in your code today, actually. <coughs> yeah. uh, it's in most codes. But I also know I've written it because things have happened in other towns. So, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think we've ever had an I was trying to recall in my the since I've been on the council, but the I don't can't recall any. I know we've had obviously litigation, but I don't recall any elected officials with any. Right, we we've had electoral fights, but those are those aren't the type of the nature right. that would be covered by this. <coughs> so I don't good. think anyone if, if people have been sued on the city council or boards, it's been covered by insurance. And that's the other thing. Most actions are covered by insurance because of if something happens, right? If there's a fight outside City Hall in a meeting and someone files suit over the fight, then that, that's all going to be handled through insurance. We're talking about non-insurable type of incidents that rarely happen. Any other you know, if, if employees are terminated for a particular reason and they're not happy about that, they can file suit, but that's covered by insurance. It's hard to envision situations that aren't covered in that respect. I'm going to refer to Attorney McArdle. Okay, I made the motion. It was seconded. If uh, after this discussion, um, I wanted to withdraw it. And you like want to talk to the guy who made the second. Okay. I mean, technically you're supposed to make a motion yeah. to, to withdraw it and then there would be a vote on that motion to withdraw if it was supported by a second. Okay. <coughs> we usually handle these informally if the second withdraws and the first withdraw then we all agree with these guys. Well, um, I guess yeah I will I will ask all of the chair for I was willing to make the motion to withdraw. So I can agree. Okay, 
So I so will let this develop in the next meeting. Exactly, so yes. Yeah. I'll make that motion yeah. to withdraw it. Okay. Motion. <coughs> so a motion to withdraw. And then a second by Alderman Chamber. We'll bring it back in the next meeting. Both items. If you need to vote we'll separately. Yes. Yeah. We'll make a motion. Oh, okay. The first and second would do instead. Okay. All right. All right. Please call the roll. Um, no, 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 we've never done that in the past. I can do it that way. You know, I don't, I've been in my procedure, whatever you want. No, no motion anymore. Yes, it's, it's motion gone. Was, was yeah. Okay. Perfect. Next item on the agenda is a discussion item, uh, consolidation of Independence Day fireworks to the first weekend of yesterday's. Um, we do have Kay Bates and Molly from the Chamber of Commerce here, and then uh, Bill, if you can go ahead and start us off. Sure. Chief Burke and I have uh, kind of sat down and are really planning and really took a look at how we can best uh, consolidate or become more efficient in our operations as we've really taken on a lot of events, which is, is great for us. It's a great place to be. Um, you know, it certainly draws people to town, but how can we best manage those events as a staff? And I think that's really what spurred some of our discussion. <coughs> and you already received an email about the possible alterations to um, sidewalk sales and what that might look like this year. Um, we continue to work on that and actually met with uh, some bar owners today to, to further that, those discussions. But through the course of, of this discussions or the, you know, the efficiency and consolidation, potential consolidation, um, one that popped up was the consolidation of fireworks from a standalone event the week before, just right the week before Fiesta Days and moving that to a part of Fiesta Days. Um, there's certainly some advantages that happen with that. And, both from a setup and from a manpower issue from a police department and parks department. Um, but it also, it, it helps out the chamber in that Sunday is a typically slow day for them. It really puts a cap on a family day. Sunday is a free day that the chamber has put on uh, the last two years and really uh, it fits well. It, you have entertainment out there, you have food options out there. Um, there's a number of things that it really worked well. On our side of things, we've talked about how do we improve that show over the last course of years under some budget crunch. Moving it off of that prime weekend actually gains us, you know, I would say probably a 10% increase in that show for the same amount of money. But the other side of that is but now pairing with the Chamber of Commerce on this, we open ourselves up to some be more attractive to sponsors who might be willing to add some money to that. That's an area that we've, I think we've been lacking in a few years. Having that framework or having those ideas behind it, um, we first met with, I first met with uh, the McHenry area um, JCs or McHenry JCs and had that discussion with them because it's been their event and traditionally that's it's one that uh, they put on. <coughs> they've also struggled, I, I guess having intricate knowledge, they've struggled in the last few years just for manpower to help get that event uh, pulled off through the day. And so that was one of the things that also played a role in this. They met with their president and vice president and we talked about what some options might be for them, um, what they'd expect or how, how it could look at consolidation or if they were even interested. They took that to their general, uh, to their general assembly and, and it was favorably received. I, I think there's some negotiations that need to happen um, provided that the council is, is okay with this. And so after that, we went to the Fiesta Days board um, and spoke with them about this same conceptual idea of moving Fiesta Days because it would change their hours. That would be something that would have to come back to city council. It would change their hours, it would change their entertainment um, for that day. Um, and walking out of that meeting, I think that, and I don't, I don't speak for them, but I think that they were very, very much excited about that potential and that idea um, of a partnership and pairing those, those events together. And so with that, you know, the next step was really to bring it to, to the board here, to the city council and see if this is something that that you're interested in because it does change our summer event schedule but it, we want everybody each of the parties to be on board so that then we can go back to the chamber and the jc's and put them in the room together and figure out what works are there certain vendors that the jc's has always um, had out there that they would want to continue to have out there is there a presence that the jc's would want to have out there does the chamber need help in setting up or breaking down that maybe the jc's can provide some of those manpower there's a lot of those issues that would need to be worked out but having agreement from all the parties involved was the place we wanted to start. So with that, I will, uh, unless Chief Burke, do you have anything else to add to that? No, no. 
We'll turn it over to you for either discussion, questions. <coughs> just to open it up at this point. Alan Schaefer. Um, when I first saw this and heard about it, I, I was uh, very much in favor of it. I, I still am. I, um, I think the biggest thing, one of the things we've been wanting to do or see, I should say, with uh, the fireworks for a long time was a, um, a better show, more, um, more shots and things as that for the amount of money that we have. And we've known that in order to do that, you either have to spend more money to get that or possibly reschedule it on a day other than the 4th of July weekend. We've seen that in other communities, so that was one of the reasons why I thought it was uh, it would be a benefit to all the people who go, and um, it would give all of those people that uh, love and participate in the the Fiesta Days another opportunity for an event that I think would be a great addition to the Fiesta Days, and I think based on the standpoint that it's a couple weeks ahead of the 4th of July, it falls into that same uh, basic time frame. And, and because so many communities around us are doing it on the 4th of July, especially this year being the 4th is on a Saturday, I believe. It is. It would be, it's gonna be extremely competitive for good shows on the 4th of July themselves. So um, for those reasons, I, I, I think it would be good. I think we definitely have to work out all of the the, you know how things would work between the JCs and the chamber. I also agree that for we should have uh, within the community, like our neighboring communities do for their shows, we should have you know, collection sites at local establishments because they get they garner you know thousands of dollars in change from people when they see that they're you know that's on there. And in some areas that have had a better show than what we've had in McHenry it's all funded that way. So um, I would love to see the, the chamber and the businesses get involved that way too, just from a collection standpoint and an additional funding source. I think so I, just speaking to that, I think one thing that the chamber does uh, extremely well, you know, and that's, that's their role, is making those connections with the business community and their partners. And so that does open up, I think, a number of other doors for us. Okay. Now, the way I look at it is that uh, we're doing away with uh, with an event. When we combine them, we're doing away with an event. If uh, I'm a younger family, three, four, five, whatever, um, and I believe that Sunday is a no entrance fee uh, family night or family day, mm -hmm. and I thought that was great because now you know you're going to get back to the old ways where people go there. It's not a, a large amount of money that, you know, granted, I mean, depending on how much they spend on food or whatever, but at least they can bring their family in there and they can enjoy together with their neighbors or, or people that they haven't seen uh, once a year. Some people used to take and uh, actually um, schedule their vacations to come back to McHenry just for Fiesta Day here because of the connection of families, you know, getting together at the yesterday. Now the problem winds up is, is I just had a family of two or three kids, and I wind up in, in the yesterdays uh, on that Sunday. Am I gonna get in there at one or two o'clock in the afternoon knowing that the fireworks isn't gonna start till 9.30 at night? And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be there till, till 11 o'clock? And then I got to fight the crowds getting out. Um, I think that would deter me from either one or the other. And what we've done now is, is we've kind of taken the option of going to both, kind of away almost, because most parents aren't going to want to deal with the kids for that length of a time. Because you know, kids. I mean, granted, they're having a great time and everything else, but after a while, they get tuckered sometimes before the parents do, and then they get cranky and. It can be just a, a bad scene for some families. I think the enjoyment uh, should be separated uh, 
so that you have both events. Now, I can understand that, especially like with the chief, he's got a problem with uh, uh, scheduling vacations because, you know, manpower and everything else, and, and he blocks out certain weeks because of that. And, you know, with a June promotion now, that's going to block out more. But, I mean, again, these are for certain types of fundraisers where you bring in, just like the chamber does with their big bands, you bring in a certain element of the community that, that goes to these type of events. The families with the young kids aren't going to go to the rock uh, concerts at night, <coughs> you know, until 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Um, that's why I, I, I hate the idea of combining the two. Yes, it would be probably uh, where we get a little bit more revenue uh, for, you know, for the fireworks, possibly a better show. Um, but I will say that uh, in the past, uh, I have always been a critic of uh, our fireworks shows, and uh, every, every time I go sit there, I, I time them every single year. So I know exactly how long, you know, if they said it's going to be a 25 minute show, I know it's a 25 or 35, whatever they say. Uh, because for a while there, it kept getting down to where I think one year we had like 18 minutes. 18, yep. And it was like, are you kidding me? You know, it takes you a half hour to get in, it takes you an hour to get out and for an 18 minute show. And um, at one point, we used to, I think, give a lot more than 15,000, didn't we? The highest we were, we were ever up to was 25, and, but that was also when we were getting a reimbursement from the JCs from the haunted house. And so we'd still put in 15 and they'd give us 10 back. We haven't received any money at all from the JCs the last couple of years. And so that's why we actually took over a collection of money and then paid the JCs a percentage of what the overall take was the last two years. Was it in the mid 2000s that we took it and we, we cut it because of the economy and everything yes. else? We've cut it twice. We cut it down to 20 once, did, yeah. and then down to 15. Yeah, we never, never, you know, added to it. And needless to say, the cost of fireworks does go up. Um, you know, I like the idea of the community taking in, <coughs> you know, possibly at, at the different uh, businesses uh, having uh, just spare change thrown in there. Yeah, that can add up uh, significantly. Um, now another question I've got is, is they have always done raise money as far as bringing cars in to five dollars a car. Now, are we going to charge for the fireworks if we if we combine them? What we talked about initially was that it would be free entrance altogether. Um, you know, and I think there's a lot of those details that need to work out still, but it would be completely free. Parking would be free, entrance would be free. Um, so bringing your family into that, it becomes. A little bit cheaper. I know it's only five dollars a car or a dollar at the gate, um, but there's also now the JCs have struggled having food options out there. You used to have Knights of Columbus. The last two years, the JCs haven't been able to get the Knights of Columbus out there, and so you've just seen like a pizza place and a funnel cake and uh, you know various other ones. But there have there hasn't been that presence out there. Um, so this solves those problems, and I and I certainly understand the feel of each event is very different. I, I think this is this is an addition. Take my family out there, and I know I get in free. There's more things for the kids to do <coughs> as a whole. Um, that music on that night can be catered. You know, we and this is we used to always have American English on Sundays, and so that was a more of a but there's a lot of those type of family bands that are out there. We've had a DJ the last two years and no, you know, no other entertainment option. Um, so, some of those things by partnering, I think the options for a family, and I and I certainly agree with you that you, what you might wind up seeing is that those families don't come out there at one o'clock because they're not gonna stay all day. Maybe we come out at four o'clock and stay from there. That's right now, that's the earliest, on a Saturday, that's the earliest we see families show up is like four o'clock. And then typically the midnight crowd starts filing in about six or seven o'clock when you start seeing those volumes of crowd out there. But that's because there's nothing else for them to do also. This now gives them some options for things to do. Or maybe you come out there in the morning and you enjoy part of the beach day, you go home and relax and then come back out later, especially for the families that live in McHenry. I think that's an attractive <coughs> option to them. How would it work as far as uh, the JCs? Uh, you know, they, they did collect quite a bit of revenue 
with the cars coming in that would help pay for that, that fireworks, now that would be taken away. Well, the city has actually collected the last two years because because the JCs have stopped donating to us at all the, because of the haunted house. They haven't given us a dime over the last two years. Um, and so the city has collected the money the last two years. Our total take the last two years has been about $5,000. We turn around and we do give 20% back to the JCs because they put the manpower on there. You know, they're organizing the show or, I mean, the city organizes the show, but they organize the the DJ and they organize the food vendors being there. So there's some value for them to set that up. Whatever negotiations happen between the JCs and the Chamber of Commerce, I think that's what needs to work itself out. Is there a donation that the Chamber makes to the JCs? Because it has been their event and as a chapter, they do a lot of good things in our community. Um, there's, there's a lot of benefits for the, for the Chamber of Commerce to have the fireworks as part of that Sunday, which has really been a slow day for them in the past. So this could be an attractive option to help everybody involved from the, the carnival, food vendors, uh, musicians, just all around, I think it, it, it's a win for them. Well, I just think uh, if the JCs are having that much of a problem as far as the impact to them, then maybe we need to look at uh, other organizations that could possibly work with them to help out. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we're doing. You know, yeah. that's well, but we're talking about the chamber. We're talking about moving it and combining it and doing away with a event this way because right. that's exactly what you're doing. You're making mm -hmm. Family Day and Fiesta Days greater, but then you're taking another event totally away to do it. Yeah, but it's a, then it's an, <coughs> and I, I I completely agree and I see what you're saying. But it's also then uh, provides an opportunity if, you're, if your family wanted to go out of town, which a lot of people go out of town for the Fourth of July. <coughs> now you can still enjoy that with your family and friends when you come back. When PSA is the time when people come back to our community, and I think you know, this is the time for them to be able to gather. Fireworks has always been a time for them to gather, but yes, it, we lose an event, but it also now creates, uh, I think, a greater impetus for everybody to get together on that on that day. When maybe outside of a holiday weekend, when you might try to get away with your kids or wherever, just escape town for a couple of days, your day off work. Yeah, like I say, I know it's a difficult decision to make and a different, difficult choice, but uh, it's still, I still feel the way I feel. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. Any other comments or questions? All of anything? No, I, 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 yeah, I measured the, uh, well, just in my own mind, just trying to be uh, a <coughs> in regards to what's, uh, what's more beneficial uh, you know, for the city as a whole, and I, I do lean towards looking forward to, to doing this and um, seeing how this works on a Sunday. I know this kind of puts a little bit more of a larger window of activity or time frame in the Sunday. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see how that whole concept draws out from like seven o'clock on yep. for the for the fireworks. Um, I. Uh, you know, and I and, I, and I, I really ask that you know we try to be as objective as possible when, if in fact we do this, that we um, uh, you know we take a look afterwards. I know how you guys get together in regards to yesterday's anywhere, anyways afterwards, just to see how did it go? Yeah, is it worth it? You know, should we go back to the fourth? Uh, because it is a you know the fourth is a unique event, very very competitive, um, and you know when I've been able to go to a couple other uh, villages around here for fireworks off of the fourth of July, I've seen some extremely wonderful shows that they've done for a lesser cost, and uh, boy I I hope we don't have to put a Hope we don't have to put a stopwatch on it because I, I think we should get, we definitely should get more bang for the buck on something like this. Yeah, on that date. That's all I have. Alderman uh, Schaefer? Yeah, I agree there too. I, the one thing I do want to stress though, when you're looking at the uh, fireworks show, don't always just look at the time because you can spread out one shell every 30 seconds and it's a pretty dull show and it'll last a half an hour. But you got to go, they, they measure that based on the number of shells that go off. So uh, if you've looked at um, 
Lake Morris, for example, just extremely, extremely good show. They have, they have a uh, finale in the middle, like a semi-finale, and then they have one at the end. It's, it's, <coughs> it's tremendously a lot going on at one time. It's not one shell going off every so often. So I just want that to be, I think you got, I think that's how they charge you. For it, by the way, is it shells, so it is, yes. it's not by time. And typically, fireworks shows are about a thousand dollars a minute. Typically, again, our show's been fifteen thousand dollars, and we've asked, we've required twenty-five minutes, and that's where you do see less shells in the air. Yep. And so we, we've, asked, you know, we've asked for those yeah. RFPs that have had, and, and our three-year contract with Melrose is up, so we're, we're ready to, you know, again ask once again for people to come back with proposals. And, the, and we can base those on shell count. It, it, there's a lot of things to look at, but we've had some we've had some good options the last two years between, you know, Mad Bomber and Melrose. And I think we even had five alarm shoot it three years ago. Bill, how much did we spend for Saint uh, Saint Patrick's Shamrock? Oh, Shamrock's five. Ten thousand dollars. Right, and that show almost, in my opinion, was better than. Yeah. Yes. On that one, we just we just asked for a finale. That's that's really all that we wanted was uh, uh, an intense kind of end to the event. No more than no more than 15 minutes. Right. Put, put a lot in the air quickly and end the event and send everybody home with a smile on their face. Right. All done. Yeah. If we're going to do contracts with, with fireworks, I don't want to see multi years. You like unless the year it's year? a very very significant savings because. I found that when we take and we go out for proposals, that we usually find that um, over a period of time, we don't get the best bang for our buck. When we go out for proposal every single year, um, it's much more competitive, and it's always seems that to get you know a greater uh, show. When we had the Mad Bomber take and do it two years ago. Two years ago. Very fantastic compared to what we had in years. Uh, we didn't pay any more money. Right. It just became it became more of a competitiveness within the city of McHenry to get better bids and everything else. And that's what we need to do. And uh, it's a shame of what happened that they didn't get it the following year due to whatever you know mishaps, uh, whatever they said or whatever. Happen, I don't know, but um, I I felt that their show was very very uh, well performed that year. And you know I'm tough to to press on fireworks, always have been. So I'm just saying, you know, uh, I really like to make sure that we, we get competitive with it. And, uh, the only thing, the only thing that we need to do on that, and that's that's part, that that needs to be the discussion up front, is set a budget because they'll base their show on what that budget is, and that's when you start looking at shell counts, is does this person have this many shells, and this, or this size shells, and there's, a, and you know, there's a lot of things that go into that, but, but setting the budget on our side is some, you know, we, if they don't bid the fireworks, they put the proposal together, we can look at what that show will be based on how we set the budget, and, and hopefully for this year, we'll at least try with setting the budget <coughs> with another organization, and maybe some sponsor dollars <coughs> on that. And see see how that works out. There's nothing to say that you know maybe maybe the chamber says you know this didn't work out for us, or we said it didn't work out for us, or the GC says no, we'd like to do it differently. We like it back this year, but I think trying something new is not a, is not a bad thing, especially when when you look at all the, the checks in the, in the plus <coughs> column. I think. Now, what are the things uh, that I don't think we even looked at or discussed? Uh, nothing. And that's the fact that if we're not going to charge for the show, um, and it's not going to be on the 4th of July, it's not going to be competitive. Um, and again, observations, because uh, I'll usually stay in the fields parked with uh, my family. And I've noticed, uh, yes, you do have people that get to the park early, then you have a tremendous amount of people that get there just before the show starts. How many more people are going to want to cram in there so uh, at the end because there is no charge? And 
you know, I know five dollars sounds like a great bargain, and it is. But for that five dollars, how many people would park in the the old uh, Kmart lot? And you know, I mean, wound up where some of these uh, uh, landlords uh, just said, "Hey, no more." You know. Yeah. So. So so two things to that point. One is that the potential to alter the shoot site I think is important for this year, and since the city owns the horse farm behind it, horses are all put away for the, you know, for that day, especially when the fireworks are around, we've already talked to the contractor, is possibly shooting them off by the pond. The, the shoot site is farther away, so now we can open, we, you know, we typically close off the park halfway, so people can't get any closer to those fireworks than we allow them to get. By moving the shoot site farther away, we've now, we're not trying to cram people in. So if more people do want to come, it's a safe situation, safer situation for the attendees for our police department. There is more room to park uh, on the ball fields. We've had to overflow only a couple of times, um, but I think advertising is the key. If we start advertising this and some alternative parking locations, I think that's going to be important as well, um, because I, I think there will be more people, especially on a free to come out on a free show on an off night. I think you're, we're going to see more people that want to come out just for that. It's a free show. The only negative is it being a Sunday yep. night. Yep. But again, there's no competition. Yes. At all, within a few days before or after. So that could wind up bringing in as much as 50 percent more than what we've had in the past. Yeah. Can we handle it? I. Can the chief handle? It? We can. Can always handle it, right, chief? Well, no. We no support we support this move because it. It frees up manpower for another weekend. You know, right. as the city does grow events, we do have to look at uh, the of consolidating, you know, for the benefit of the employee as well. So this is a direct benefit to police officers. It frees up one weekend that they can actually take vacation time with their families, which is a prime weekend, the Fourth of July. Um, we already have officers out there on Sunday, so we yeah we'll have to add a few more. But um, that and you know the important thing is there, although there is a, a minimal amount of money that we might not make. Um, we don't we don't recoup any of the costs for the Fourth of July fireworks for manpower hours. So the police department spends about five thousand dollars in manpower hours just to put on the fireworks show, plus whatever the parks and parks department puts on for the setup pre, and so that cost to the city goes away. You know, so there's also a cost savings there to help offset any revenue that we would have lost in the sale of those fireworks as well. Whether or not it's a equal wash, I don't know, but the difference would probably be minimal. <coughs> any other questions, comments? I'm, I'm in favor of this. If the mm -hmm. chamber and the JCs are good with it, I think it's a great idea. If it doesn't work, we can switch back next year and <coughs> let's give it a try. Everyone agree? The I'll only thing is, you can't bring it back. You lose that year, period. Oh, okay. I think you got to dollarize it for Alderman Glab and show them the savings and the profit or then he might be in favor. I think it's I think it's gonna be positive on on all ends. All ends, yeah. All the Glab always looks at the services for the, the residents. I think you're gonna get a better service to the residents here too because now that whole Sunday is gonna be a family day and because it's gonna be possibly free, they can come and go if they like and it's gonna be much more localized for us. Uh, and the city residents than it would be for the for the Fourth of July event. I think it's it's going to turn out to be a, um, looked upon by residents as a definite plus. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Look, we'll just uh, I'll work with the chamber and the JCs, and we'll kind of hammer out the details. And then, like I said, back we'll bring back before you that some, what that a Sunday event would look like because there will be some alteration of hours um, as a whole. Entertainment and all the aspects that are part of that event. So that will come back before you once we finalize that. But thank you for the input. All the way up. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. Uh, staff reports? Yeah, I'll start. Uh, I want you to start, Ross. Go ahead. I just answer. wanted to uh, let council know we did hire a city planner, um, Cody Sheriff. Yeah, he started this week. Uh, he comes to us from the county and uh, he has a pretty uh, extensive background in planning. Uh, he did some he grew up in McHenry. He, isn't, he wasn't, he wasn't a McHenry resident. He doesn't live here now, but um, 
he's back in McHenry working for us. So just wanted to pass that along to council. Um, I'll, I'll try and bring him in here in a future meeting. Uh, introduce him. But uh, we, we now have a city planner. What's his name again? Cody Shiro. Thank you, Ross. Anyone else? Yeah, just, just a couple of uh, fun things for council. Uh, this is, should say draft on it, so it's supposed to be a draft, so you can write it on the front cover or, or whatever you want to do. The watermark then print out for some reason, or I didn't want to reprint them. So this is uh, the draft uh, of the capital improvement program for FY 2021 through 24-25. Um, and uh, what we'll do is uh, it's two weeks ahead of time, so on the 20th of uh, January, so the next meeting we'll have a, as a discussion item, we'll have uh, the opportunity for council to ask any questions uh, of uh, any staff that are here, plus we'll probably be bringing in additional uh, superintendents or managers that participate in the development of this. I know uh, Public Works has done that in the past. Uh, to be able to talk through any of the uh, information that's identified in here, I guess what I'll remind council of that this is not a budget. Uh, again, that's, that, that's the next step in the process. This identifies uh, kind of a plan for projects, anything over $10,000 uh, that the city uh, plans to spend money on uh, of infrastructure, uh, vehicles, equipment, um, you know, park improvements, any uh, public facilities, anything like that. This is uh, just a five-year plan for that. Uh, that's put together based on the best of our <coughs> knowledge and ability and, and uh, financial information at this time. And, it, and we've adjusted it a little bit this year to try, try to make it more of a, a reasonable, uh, from a financial standpoint, while it still cannot be totally funded because it's still a $50 million capital improvement program for five years. One of the adjustments, for example, is in the streets program, we'd we've kind of thrown in all the projects that we know that are street projects, which throws off those numbers. Because it just, all it's done doing is, is an Im a financial impact of saying we have a, a $50 million street program. We all know we have a $50 million street program. What can we really reasonably do over the next five years or potentially do over the next five years? So we broke it down a little more that way this time. And uh, so take a look at it. Uh, come to the 20th meeting, uh, ready to ask any questions that you have. And then what we'll do is make any adjustments from there, and we'll bring it back the first meeting in February for formal adoption by, by the city council. And then obviously we take the information that's in here and, and the direction provided by council through that acknowledgement or approval, and we try to work those projects into the budget. So even if, you, even if we identify things in the CIP that need to be done through priority, that doesn't necessarily mean they make it to the budget because there just may not be money to do it. <coughs> so, so that's that, and then the next thing I have for council is, and pass these out, um, it, as you may recall, a couple of years ago, when we were talking to, and it has been a couple of years ago, to Ricky Rockets on their project um, out on East 120, um, we started also talking about replacing the city's uh, gateway signs um, and all the entrances to the municipality south uh, and north Route 31 and east and west 120. And uh, in Ricky Rockets, we'd worked into that redevelopment agreement at the time, the replacement of the sign. And so we had started to put together some concept plans for what that might look like. And, uh, and then that project kind of slowed down, so we didn't do much with it. And that'll be coming back the next meeting, Doug? Yeah. Uh, the next meeting, and so we want to be prepared to be able to say, you know, this is, from our standpoint, they're going to contribute money towards it in the redevelopment plan, but yet we obviously want to be prepared when the weather breaks to be able to identify signage that we like and, uh, and uh, go, out to go through a process to find a contractor for it. So what we're asking for on this one is just, there's, there's really two different sign options and two different base options that you have in front of you. Just look at those pages as one, two, three, four, from top to bottom. And just send me an email, or if you just want to stop tonight and talk to Bill or Doug and I, and let one of us know what your preference is on those, then we'll kind of consolidate what our what our preferences are, and we can let you know and kind of go from there. Um, from a staff standpoint, um, I'll let you, I'll just say that we kind of tend to lean towards the River Rock option over the brick options, um, just because everything else, our other signage on the Riverwalk and some of the other signs that we've done, the digital sign out on 120 by Jewel, 
we've used, you know, that's been river rock that we've gone with and not any sort of brick or anything like that. So that's kind of our preference from that. But from a signage standpoint, we're kind of, you know, split, you know, and, and what our recommendation is for the actual sign. Or you may say, I don't like any of these and we have to figure something else out. But at least let us know what your preference is out of those one, two, three, four. And again, you can email it to me or, or Bill or Doug if you want. And then we'll uh, be able to work that in when we, when we work forward with uh, Thorns with the revolving agreement. Thank you. There's nothing needed tonight. Just uh, wanted to pass it out to get some input on it. Thank you. Thank you, Anyone else? Uh, May I report? Um, I know a few aldermen or council members wanted to know the sponsorship levels and so forth for the concert coming up. Uh, within two weeks, we'll have all the sponsorships locked down. Um, I'm happy that the way it's going, we've raised over 200000 towards the artists uh, so far. Um, so it's, uh, it's been pretty, uh, pretty good. We got the main uh, acts uh, set, and we're getting the openers uh, locked down right now. So with it, by that two weeks, you'll also get that information. Uh, it'll be confidential until February 9th when we can announce it. Okay. I did, I did have one other item, sorry. The ch I sent out an email last week, I believe, or maybe the end of the week before, the Chamber Dinner Dance yes. is coming up uh, on Saturday, January 25th. It will be at the Andrea again. And uh, um, I've all already made some re some table reservations uh, on behalf of the city there. But uh, shoot me a text or an email as soon as you can to let me know if you um, if you're able to attend, uh, you and your spouse uh, are both uh, uh, able to attend just let me know and I'll get those reservations into the chamber and then we can adjust it our numbers based on that but I have made some reservations and we can cut or add if we need to if people are interested I think it starts at 5 30 and then the music usually starts till about uh, starts at about nine o'clock it goes till I think 11 or somewhere in there thank you uh, any city council comments see none looking for a motion to adjourn all in the same? I'll make that motion. Second? <coughs> All in the same? Second. Clark, please call roll. Alderman Santi? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Glad? Yes. Alderman Hardy? Yes. Alderman Hennett? Yes. Alderman Nine? Yes. Thank you, Council. How was it, Ryan? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs>